George Benson. Never give, never give up on a good thing here on BBC Radio London. I'll put my teeth back in and I'll be able to give you the outros to the songs and speak to you properly, like a proper Londoner should be able to. But how are you doing? It is me, Jeanette Kwachi, with you on the afternoon show. Ten past three here on a Monday afternoon. I'm going to move in towards the arts now. Let's switch it up a little bit. We have been speaking about Korean pop culture, South Korean pop culture to be exact. But I'm going to take you back to 1950s London, North London, drawing upon real life stories of everyday working class people. There's a musical out, a new one, it's called Punchy. And the musical follows one particular lost soul in post-war London as he tries to overcome the crimes of his past. The composer, Jack Taroni, drew inspiration from his mother's Islington childhood. And I'm pleased to say he joins me now to talk more. Good afternoon, Jack. Hello, Jeanette. How are you doing? I'm really, really good, thank you. And um, I love speaking to people that have created things, especially in the last <laughs> two months, two years, because it has been such a weird time for every creative when they're trying to get their head around what's happening. And they also, I feel like, have been full of ideas because you've just had time to be a bit still. Is that something that happened with you, Jack? Yeah, for sure. Although uh, the journey with Punchy has been uh, about four years in development. Um, I was just getting down to that groove, actually, Jeanette, because it's quite appropriate, isn't it? You <laughs> it <know>? is. <laughs> <laughs> Never give up on a good thing. I think that's been my mantra for the last four years. But no, you're certainly right. The last two years um, to keep that focus and, you know, maintain that vision um, in these difficult times has been, you know, a challenge. But I'm so glad that we've um, stuck through and we're really excited for opening night, which I can't believe is tomorrow. Tomorrow. And when you think about this, Jack, tomorrow, right? Opening night. How many sleepless nights have you had since you've known that this is actually going ahead and going to stage? Yeah, oh, honestly, I have several grey hairs that I didn't know existed <laughs> now. Um, you know, I think that's all part of, um, yeah, trying to bring some light into the world. But it takes, yeah, it takes courage to show up and you know, those obstacles to overcome along the way. And my gosh, we've, you know, as a community of Londoners, we certainly know what that's about. No, for sure. And tell me a bit about Punchy, because my notes in front of me always kind of give me the, the summary, the overview, but I want to hear from you. Mm. You, know, you are the person. You drew inspiration here from your mum's childhood. I want to hear uh -huh. all about that as well. But in terms of Punchy itself, the musical, a general yeah. synopsis without any spoilers, how does this, how does this, <laughs> how does this come to stage? Well, it's actually really quite a unique story because um, I went to a writer's retreat about four years ago and met the author, Richard Barrett, um, who's written a book called What My Soul Told Me. Um, and he knew I was a musician and he absolutely um, really loved the sort of soul music that I was creating. And he just pitched me this idea and said, look, you know, what if um, we wrote a musical using your music as a basis, but we delved into um, having characters show up um, so, for example, we have a character in the show called Ego. Um, so our lead character meets his ego. Um, it's personified on stage. And he also meets his soul. Um, and then when you sort of juxtapose that with the 1950s era, um, that recipe um, suddenly all kind of came together and got me quite excited. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, we've been asking our um, listeners today to talk about their egos and their selfishness. <laughs> and we, we're saying like, if you had to think back over the last two years in particular, maybe, was there a time where you absolutely had to let your ego take the position of, you know, the reason why you've made certain decisions? And that, it, it's a quite a hard thing to admit, isn't it, for mm. a lot of people that they they put their ego first above everything else just based yeah. on a decision they've had to make. And how does the ego play out in this play at all? Well, it plays out in many different ways, um, but obviously the ego can be like the voice of the inner critic and we all, you know, have that self talk and sometimes, you know, that can manifest in a negative way and obviously that then can influence your decisions. But, you know, it's about kind of tuning in to the voice of your soul. And that's why I really love um, Peter Parker Mensa's portrayal of soul um, in our show, because, you know, it's a voice that's a little bit softer. And if we're talking about radio and sort of tuning in, you have to kind of tune your dial up to listen to your soul and follow, you know, the things that you want to do creatively with your life. Um, and we watch Punchy's journey um, in the first part of his life. Um, he's living in an egocentric space. He's quite a volatile, angry young man. Um, and yeah, like I said, Jeanette, um, thanks for mentioning my mum's stories yeah. that I, used to, I, you know, I, I grew up listening to because 
um, yeah, the, the real punchy, um, it, it was just a small um, grain of a story that she told me, but um, basically she grew up in um, Islington um, around the Angel and um, she lived in a block of flats there um, along St. Mary's Path. And um, one day a fight broke out on the balcony um, and it was actually a, a, a young man who we believe was suffering from mental health um, difficulties. Um, and he fled his family and they never saw him again. And that story really touched my heart um, when I heard it. And, uh, you know, I just sort of used that germ of an idea alongside um, a wonderful playwright in Kevin McMahon to think, well, OK, if we bring these ego and soul dynamics into um, our story, how could we imagine Punchy having an opportunity to live out maybe a different life, um, you know, where mental health um, resources were, were more available in a way and um, yeah that was the kind of uh, process behind it. Amazing and did your mother tell you any other stories because I, I know with mums <laughs> with mums sometimes you, you give them a bit of a nugget and then off they go do you know what I mean like they really give you a story of, of, of a time what else did she tell you about that time? Oh gosh yeah I mean just a, a lot of the characters are just from real sort of the earth people that um, you know she grew up around and um, a lot of the names I've kind of cheekily you know, borrowed for, for some of the characters, so <laughs> it's been good. But no, it's, it's, it's got a strong like mental well-being message. But, you know, in all honesty, it's set in a pub in the 50s. Um, it's just a raucous, wild night of entertainment. Like the band is on the stage. And so, you know, there's a lot of good humor in it. And I think it will make people laugh and cry and, you know, everything in between. <laughs> Was this always meant to be a musical for you, Jack? Uh, it's such a, uh, it's really funny, Jeanette, because um, I'm a rock and soul uh, songwriter, first and foremost, an artist, you know, so um, whenever I hear the word musicals, I've always been put off by the thought of like jazz hands and glitter and you know, so <laughs> <laughs> it was really not my, my bag. Um, but, you know, when I heard that story, um, the songs that I had over the last decade just inevitably wrap themselves around, um, you know, this anecdote and um, I thought, you know, I, if we're going to do it, I, I want to do it my way. So we ripped up the rule book, stuck a band on stage and you can just rock out or you can get down to the grooves, you know. I love that. I love that so much because, I, you listen, these, these, these are the things, right? Sometimes we don't expect to be in a position where we're ever going to do something. And then when she like, get involved and get into it, all <laughs> sorts of inspiration comes from it as well. And how have, how have rehearsals gone? Because whenever I speak to, you know, playwrights, composers, there's so many things you want to tweak. You've got the vision, but maybe mm. it doesn't always manifest the way that you want it to. Would you say this is as close to the vision as possible? <laughs> well, certainly you have to roll your sleeves up and, and, and get on with it and say, okay, well, it is what it is. But, you know, if we talk even from a higher perspective, you know, Soul's voice would say, you know what, everything, despite the chaos, is maybe as it should be. And, you know, we kind of lean into that energy in our show. Um, so I'm, I'm taking that philosophy, although I've got to be, it's got to be said at the moment, I'm pulling my hair out. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Your opening night is tomorrow. Of course, you want this to be absolutely perfect. But like you say, there is a beauty sometimes in the imperfection of the things mm. that we do here. And in terms of this being a project and, and, and moving on and moving forward, you say you're a songwriter first, you know, in mm. that sense. Would you would you do another one? Would you do another play? It's definitely given me the flavour to do it. I actually have a, a quite a bold idea for the next one, but before I can even get there, I, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm just focusing on, on where we're at. <laughs> which is great, which is great. And did you, did you grow up in Islington or are you somewhere else in London? Yeah, no, so we were economic migrants, you know, like, um, so it's obviously become quite gentrified now, certain parts of Islington. And um, so my mum and, you know, they moved out and... Um, we actually moved to Arnest Grove. Um, and it's actually quite funny. My collective of musicians, I uh, call them the Arnest Groove. Ah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, we use lots of different um, session players on building the soundtrack. And, um, yeah, it's, it's yeah, really, really been a fun project. No, it sounds like it's amazing. But tell everybody where we can watch this play, where we can watch it and when and how long it's on for. Yeah, so it's on um, an exclusive um, 18 shows uh, for the throughout November at the Courtyard Theatre and um, you can purchase tickets at punchythemusical.com and it'd be an absolute blessing um, to see everybody here and you know maybe it's a, a space to kind of have something new um, show up in your life and 
you know, positive energy and maybe what we all need right now. Brilliant stuff, Jack. Honestly, thank you so much for coming on speaking to us about this. Oh, God bless. Thank you, Jeanette. No it's been problem. a pleasure. Thank you so much. That's Jack Taroni there, the composer for Punchy the Musical. You heard him. You can get your tickets at punchythemusical.com. And that's playing at the Courtyard Theatre in Hoxton from tomorrow, as you heard. Poor Jack. Not getting any sleep, but you know what it's like when you've got a big old project. You want to get it done and get it out of the way just so everyone can see all the work that you've been putting in. So I'm asking you the question, actually, just based on that conversation as well. When have you let your ego, your inner critic, as Jack said, get the better of you when making your decisions? Can be positive, can be negative. Could it be a decision that absolutely went your way or it didn't? Let me know. 0800 731 2000.